Good morning, everybody. I'm Juliet Davis. My husband's Colin Davis. He's here. And I'm your women's ministry leader. Some of you remember me from the big kickoff from last year. And some that's the only way you remember me. Because I've had guys come up, young men, say, I remember I didn't recognize you except when you're doing this. Is that okay? Funny. Um I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. There's some flowers and chocolate for the moms. And I also want to give a big shout out to stepmoms and foster moms and adoptive moms as well. And a lot of women that don't have kids of their own, they're sometimes mothers anyway to us, spiritual mothers. And I want to give a shout out to them as well. And I want to invite uh, the ushers forward to take the offering. And we're going to pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful, beautiful Mother's Day. Thank you for all the moms. And we want you to bless the gift and the giver this morning as we give our tithes and offerings to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So women's ministry... Uh, we try to get together once a month, try, and do something fun, and just get together and hang out. Mostly it's a time of fellowship. And uh, this Sunday, I mean this Saturday coming up, the 20th, we're going to have a brunch, a spring brunch, at, from 11 to 1, and the ages are 12 and up, so your young girls can come too. And the registration is only $15, and that includes your lunch and a t-shirt. We're going to be making up some women's ministry t-shirts. I'll probably be calling Lauren later and saying, Oh, me, I can't do this. But I'm going to try. I have a cricket, so I'm going to try. And you can register on the app or online, or just let me know, and I could get it going on. And I wanted to announce Camp Muddy Waters registration is open. And this year, yeah, we're going to be having a science lab along with the military theme. So it's going to be a blast. Think about the most crazy science experiments you could possibly do for kids. and It's going to happen. And that's from July 10th to the 14th. Ages are 4 through 13. And it's ten dollars per child. You can register on the website or scan the QR code at the registration booth. And we're going to have a work day for that for Camp Ready Waters, uh, June third from nine to eleven. And that's the day where we create all the props, fill up the sandbags with not really sand but other things, whatever we can find. <laughs> and uh, see, so you can see Selena for more info. Or sign up at the registration desk as well. And the summer kickoff for the 412 group is going to be Friday, June 2nd at 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. That's their regular um, meetup time on Friday nights. And we're going to be celebrating the 8th and 12th grade grads with a barbecue and games and prizes. Same thing, because if I'm being transparent behind my bedroom door is piles of laundry lurking to either be put away or to be washed. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> Dust bunnies stocking. Piles mysteriously growing on the counter. And I, you know what? I just don't understand it. I go through them. I throw it away. All the stuff that makes up the pile. And then I'll, mysteriously they appear again. But now it's moved to this side. And then sometimes there's even more piles. How does that happen? I don't know. Unfinished work. Mess. Clutter. For some, I know some are very tidy and some don't have that issue. There's, I don't know who you are, but let's talk. <laughs> Listen, that's not all. That's not all that's in your house. What else is in your house is family, memory making, laughter, and a whole lot of love. So we're here today to honor moms who have small children, grown children, grandmas like moms like Juliet was saying I love that she did that shout out to people who are like moms spiritual moms I have many as well and and you're needed and even dads who are filling in as moms <laughs> you know I mean if you want a flower you can have one on the way out no problem take two bags of chocolate 
We thank you for your encouragement. We thank you for your sacrifice. And listen, to those who feel overwhelmed, because I know there's some mamas out there who do, um, I, I just want to read this post. That was a Facebook post uh, by Lisa Bevere. Some of you know who she is. She's awesome. And I'm going to read what this post um, says. For the mamas who feel exhausted, your kids are calling your name, the fridge is running low, and your coffee is getting cold, you're probably, probably asking yourself, how do I do this? Friend, let go of the pressure to do everything perfectly and just enjoy those kids. Remember to lean into God and his word. It's these practices that will equip you to raise them, not a perfectly kept home. I know you get exhausted at times or maybe a lot, but the work you are doing as a mother is some of the most important you'll ever do. Every moment you invest in your kids, you're investing in legacy. So grab your cup of coffee from the microwave again and keep going, mama. And so moms, we thank you for the, lo- for the way you love. Nobody loves like a mama. So we thank you for, th- for that. Let's give moms a round of applause. Yeah. And uh, just so you know, pastor's not here, <laughs> in case you didn't figure that out. Um, keep him in prayer, though. He's, been a, he's had a, a, a bug of some sort. And um, his vo- he's getting he's feeling better, but his voice is still not completely returned. So um, definitely keep him in prayer. We love our pastor, and I'm so glad that he gets the day off. Hopefully he'll he'll get some good rest. Um, all right, so we're going to be talking about a mom today from uh, the book of Second Kings. It's uh, actually the story of Elisha and the widow's oil. All right, that was loud. <laughs> and so we're gonna you can read along with me in this portion of scripture. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in your house? And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourselves and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside so that so she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. She came and told the man of God, and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons could live on the rest. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for doing only what you can do, the impossible, to take what we have and cause it to increase for your purposes. Help us to trust you for the increase. Give us eyes to see you in the midst of our circumstances, to see that your work not only is done on our behalf, but through us for others. And we thank you for all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So a little background history on this is uh, Elisha means God is my salvation. And Elisha was the successor of Elijah and the office of the prophet in Israel. And he was the prophet's protege. And he was that until Elisha was taken into heaven. After a few years of training, Elisha would become God's spokesman to the northern kingdom. And he had a ministry filled of proclamations and warnings, but also of signs and miracles, such as this case, um, the story of the widow, um, his encounter with her. We're going to see just about these miracles, some of these miracles. And we're going to go, what I'm going to start doing right now is kind of go verse by verse and kind of just dig deeper into that and really just kind of dissect it a little bit. And, and then also... Uh, maybe give us something to uh, some application for that. So what we can take home. We're going to learn this from their story that faith coupled with God's supernatural provision. There's no stopping. There's nothing that he can't do. And we, we operate with him in faith. And guess what? When we do that, we lack no good things. So we're going to start with verse one. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that your servant feared the Lord, but the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. This widow, this mom, she went to Elisha. Why? 
because Elisha belonged, um, because her husband belonged to a group of prophets. He, he was probably a student of Elisha. And, and I love what a commentator said. A commentator said this about about this prophet that not all, sometimes we like to think of maybe these men of God and as these college students who are single, right? But this man had a family. He had bills to pay. He was caring for them. And so why did she go to go to, to Elisha? Because Elisha was her husband's people. Right. He, they, our people have our back. Right. So her, um, Elisha should have her back, right? Because they belong, they work together, they do ministry together. And it makes me think of, of, of times when maybe you've noticed this at your, at your job, maybe there's somebody, a coworker who's going through something and, and people start passing around the hat, right? Because they're going to have each other's back. And, and even more so in the household of faith. I think about, and I know you probably won't mind me saying Dottie and Brian, but how people pull together when their house burned down. What a beautiful thing. And I know I don't even know all of the stories, but it wasn't, it was the people here coming alongside them, supporting them, but also their neighbors, their neighbors, actually their neighbors were seeing people from the church there. What a witness, right? And they were also saying, how can we help? Right? So she's going to him because she's like, you're my people and I need help. Also, she was a widow. And for back in that day, it was a perilous fate. For widows, right? They, it, it was their husband was the one who took care of them, and a true test of devotion and upright uh, uprightness back in that day was to be able to observe those in power of how they treated widows and orphans, not to be like those we read about in Job. They wronged the barren, childless woman and do no good to the widow, but instead to honor God and His wishes to care for widows. And we read this in Psalms. 146 9 the lord watches over the sojourners sojourners he holds the widow and the fatherless he holds the widow and the fatherless i don't know maybe that speaks to somebody today (laughs) he's holding you and he loves you don't forget that take that with you today so she was a widow and so she went to him because she needed help but also she was in debt law permitted that one's family could be sold and just can be sold to pay that debt. That was actually Old Testament law. That was okay to do with certain instructions that it be uh, uh, not a severe service, not, not with abuse, not with mistreatment and not, and only for a limited length of time. And we read about that in Leviticus 25, 39 through 40. If one of your fellow Israelites falls into poverty and is forced to sell himself to you, do not treat him as a slave. Treat him instead as a hired worker or as a temporary resident who lives with you, and he will serve you only until the year of Jubilee. And so I think about all this already here in what verse one, and I'm thinking about what's going down here, and I'm kind of trying to insert myself into this story. And I'm thinking, what is the pressing issue here with this woman? I, obviously, you know, she's a widow. We talked about she has debt, but I'm thinking about it. What is this pressing issue? And then I started thinking kind of, crazy because I'm like some women are probably like I'm like her husband's gone and I thought ladies I was thinking this I'm like somebody's going to be thinking oh that's really such a bad thing her husband's gone really so don't don't go there women all right this is a bad thing this is this is an issue that the husband was gone in fact it's bad because listen he wasn't just gone he was he was dead but her boys were not gone but they were about to be now, moms, I know you feel me on this, right? Because ain't nobody going to mess with my kids, right? Them are fighting words right there. I'm going to do whatever I can do to make sure that my kids are okay. And that's what this, this, that's what this mom is doing. This is why she's going to Elisha. For a child is the very heart of their mom. And now we're going on to verse 2. And Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me. What have you in the house? And she said, your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. I love that he asked that question. What shall I do for you? See, she, he knew her plight. He worked with her husband. He had compassion and he was moved by that compassion to assist her in her time of need. He was a minister of the word of God. He, would, he, he was a, ma- a godly man. You are a minister of the good news. 
the good news of Jesus Christ. This should be a question on all of our hearts. Are you prepared to ask that question when someone is in need, those who are hurting? I'm not talking about enabling sin, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about encouraging people to stay in their stuckness, right? <laughs> not really to willing to move on and see where they can do better. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being the hands of feet and feet of Jesus, agents of hope. We are to emulate Jesus Christ. And we read in Matthew 20, 28, for even the son of man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. What do you have in your house? Elisha is asking this. Why is he asking, it, uh, asking this? Because he's saying this, what can you sell? What can you use? Listen, what he's doing also is he's getting her, her, her mind off of the, the, her, the focus off of, the lack or the panic. And he's redirecting her. What I love about him is he's not doing it for her. He's coming alongside of her. He's supporting her, encouraging her and working with her to find a solution. That's what we're called to do in people's lives too, to be there for them, to support them, not to do it for them, but to come alongside them, to build them up in the things of God, to edify one another. And what does she say? I have nothing but a flask of oil. Now that flask was uh, more of a flask instead of a big jar. It was a smaller bottle of oil. <clears throat> but she says this. I have. I noticed that she said this first. I have nothing but. And that kind of tripped me up a little bit. It kind of stopped me in my tracks. I have nothing. Because a lot of times you and I, we do the same thing. We stop short. We say, I have nothing but. I guess all I can do is pray. <laughs> How about this? Uh, this is crazy is going on. You know what I can do? I can pray, <laughs> right? But if so, we often see our lack instead of our plenty. It reminds me of something that happened just recently. Um, I love our Wednesday night Bible studies, by the way, and I, I just a plug. You guys need to come out to it. Uh, there's not a whole lot attending. There's probably been about 16. Oh, enough though, right? Enough. And we're getting together. We're learning topics on prayer. Zach did an awesome job last week. I loved it. Zach touched my heart. Um, and then we broke up into groups and we started to pray for one another. I mean, you, you can't beat that. You really can't beat that. So we got together and John McKenzie um, prayed for me. We we're praying for one another this time. And John McKenzie prayed for me. And um, I, he said, what do you need prayer for? And I said, Gosh, I mean, where do I begin? Or, you know, I was, I was late. I didn't know. And so I was kind of like, well, I know there's something that I'm trying to work on and I'm trying to get back into shape. <laughs> I, I need to, I need to really be diligent there. And so he, he prayed for that. I also mentioned to him that my daughters had just graduated and they're back home. I actually didn't m mention the, the wedding that, that Gabby and Mike are getting married. Our new youth pastor. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a lot of plans. I'm telling you, parents, bring your kids to youth group. There's no reason why they they shouldn't come. It's awesome. He's con he's told me some of the things. I'm super excited. I'm so glad he's here. Um, so I was telling John that my kids were home, but um, all of a sudden, and he just starts praying for me. And this is totally Holy Spirit led because I didn't say some of the things that he brought up. But one of the things that he brought up was, um, or what he said was, you know, sometimes Lord, we just don't see the good and even within our own families like we don't see that and you know and he was he was so gentle about it he wasn't accusatory he wasn't doing that it was like but it just it floored me because i was definitely in in a situation where that applied you know and where i was like whoa it was so cool man that that was awesome but that's the thing often we we um we see our lack and we don't see the good Maybe you're, maybe you're the same. Maybe, maybe moms, all you see is the failure, right? Or maybe you think I have nothing to offer. I'm just a mom. Don't ever say that. How many people would love to be just a mom? There's this Facebook post that, um, that I read and you guys probably have seen this before. It says your contribution to the world may not be something you do, but someone you raise, right? Listen, even when you get it wrong as a mom or just in general, as in life, as we get it wrong, moms, dads, people, whatever, right? Give that mistake over to the Lord. 
If all you have to offer is your mistake, then you have something he can use. (laughs) Just give it to him. Don't hold on to that. She had a jar, a flask of oil, not for cooking, not for fuel, but for anointing. And something that I was really, I guess, pressed in my mind and my heart was medicinal purposes or healing for some reason that was sticking out to me. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. We see that a lot in scripture, which represents that supernatural help and healing. I don't know, maybe some of you here today are dealing with some soul wounds and you need that that healing balm to come and, and heal it up for you. The Holy Spirit is that for you. He is He's going to heal you. He's going to help you. He's going to comfort you in your time of need. This also reminds me that we lack no good thing because he has blessed us abundantly. On to the next verse. Then he said, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels and not too few. Go borrow vessels. Borrow is the Hebrew word sha'el, and it means to ask or to inquire. Go to your neighbors, right? These are the people that, that would know her. Again, people who would have her back or should, right? Ask them. And these are the ones that, that who undoubtedly will be blessed in the giving because you can't outgive God. This is something I was thinking about is sometimes we don't ask for help or even from the church for people that pray for us. Um, I, I have this issue. Give me some godly counsel. Sometimes we don't do that because pride gets in the way. But in so doing, we not only rob ourselves of the blessing, we rob somebody else. I'm not talking about taking advantage of somebody and their goodness or somebody taking advantage of you. We've got to have that discernment, right? We've got to be able to, to know what, how God is leading us in each individual situation. But we need each other. And we need to be there for one another, especially within the household of faith. And I feel like I already said this verse, but maybe it's just because I went over it this morning. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are of the household of faith. As we have opportunity, Elisha had opportunity. The neighbors had opportunity. Use what you have and trust God for the increase in your life and the life of somebody else. And and I'm drawn just over this whole, like just preparing for this. I just keep on thinking of the single mom, the single mom, the single mom. And maybe there's single moms here, maybe in second service. And I just, I want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. And if you need something, come and ask. Let us pray with you. In fact, maybe you know somebody who's a single mom that you can reach out to today or this week and just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. There was a woman who attended this church not too long ago, and I just recently saw her at a church, um, something that we had going on here at the church. And she was she later on, I said hi to her and her daughter. And um, later on, she sent me an email that week and just said, you know, I'm really wanting to get back to that area where my family is, friends are, and where my, my church is. She says, she's a single mom. She says, I don't have that support. I don't have that. And she goes, and I so desperately need it and want it. And she goes, and I also want my daughter to be uh, brought up where people who are um, godly people, positive people pouring into her life. And I just, I couldn't forget that because that's how she saw us. <laughs> I was like, yes, <laughs> we're doing something right. <laughs> you know, it was, it was awesome. But then also my heart was sort of hurting, right, for her. And so I was, I began to pray for her. And, and, and you all could pray for her too. She could remain nameless. God knows her name, <laughs> but keep her in prayer. We need to be empty vessels for other people. Empty of selfish ambition and just our desires, right? What I want. That way, it's a win-win. We get filled up and then we pour out into others. Here's the next set of slides. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons and pour into all these vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. He said, shut the door. (laughs) I love that. Can I say that again? Shut the door. (laughs) Behind you and your sons. 
In other words, shut yourself in with God. Have a single focus to be in the presence of God, to hear his voice above all other voices. You see, this is where we're strengthened in faith. This is where the widow is going to demonstrate her faith in front of her children. This is where they get together. They pray together. They seek God together. They expect him to move on their behalf. They're operating in faith together at home. It happens at home, first and foremost. Then he says, pour into all these vessels. Elisha didn't say, I'll do it for you. He came alongside of her. You do it. Listen, we all need an Elisha in our lives. Someone to prophesy God's truth and word into your life and over your situation. We all need an Elisha in our lives to remind us of who we are and to remind us of who he is. To hold us accountable for upholding the truth, the word of God. Like we have a responsibility to to get into the word of God, to know what it says, and to proclaim those promises in our circumstances, in our lives, over our children's lives. We need an Elisha. We need an Elisha to ask us that question. What's in your house? Use what you have. That small flask of oil represents her faith. And she stepped out in obedience and in faith along with God's provision. And guess what? It was multiplied. God is awesome. There's nothing he can't do. What are you going through today that you need him to give you increase? Where you're focusing on the lack and maybe you're right in it. And you're like, hey, you can't tell me there ain't lack. I'm dealing with it. Well, what can't he do when you give that to him? It's not impossible for him. I love that about him. (laughs) He's so great. Set aside the full ones. Miraculous happens every day. We just don't always see it. The great multiplier is at work every single day in our lives, but we just don't see it. And maybe we do. And you praise him for it. Keep on. Because if you keep on, that builds our faith, doesn't it? When we start to see what he's doing in our lives, it builds our faith. Our faith grows. Man, you can't stop it. You don't have enough pots for that. Awesome. That's what we want. That's what he wants, by the way. The oil stopped flowing. Can you imagine, right, if she had more pots? What our faith will do coupled with a supernatural power. Oh, my goodness. Can you guys just, let's just stop. I'll stop talking for a minute. I just want your minds to start thinking about what are the possibilities? What are you needing today? Your faith and his ability. Right? Let's have faith. Let's believe that. We all been given a measure of faith. What are you doing with yours? What do you believe in him for? So there are four commands or instructions that I think that Elisha has given in this portion of scripture. And I want us to be able to take that home as, as a way to and apply it to our lives this week and, and every day thereafter. If you, you know, don't forget it. And number one is this. Take inventory of your house. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Whom you have from God, you are not your own. I'm not talking about your physical house, though maybe you need to take some inventory there too. I know I got to do the laundry. (laughs) That's just something I got to do. I'm talking about your spiritual house. Tend to that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let's just stop that for a minute because I'm going to go over that with my notes and I don't want to. You have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. You have the power that raised Christ from the dead. I say this a lot in my sermons because it's so cool living on the inside of you. You lack no good thing, right? We need to pay attention to that. We need to uh, nurture that relationship. We need to, we need to, we need to get down to business with the Holy Spirit to find out what he's got in store for us. We need to take inventory of our house. We need to be able to walk by the spirit and not by our flesh. He is our helper. This widow, this mom, she went to Elisha. Now, Elisha, he represents God and what God can do, right? She went to him. He did not go to her. We go to God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You have the Holy Spirit draw near to He's living on the inside of you. 
You have the word of God. You have the promises. You have no lack. Number two. So number one, what's take inventory of your house, right? What's in your house? That's what he asked her. Number two, borrow vessels. John 3.30. Oops. He must increase, but I must de de decrease. I love that John Baptist said that. I love that. He must increase, but I must decrease. More of him, less of me. We need to empty ourselves out because I can't be filled up with him if I'm filled up with me and all the troubles of this world. We need to empty ourselves out of selfish desires in order to be filled up with him. Do you want to be filled up with him today? Oh, I don't believe you. <laughs> that was just kind of lame. <laughs> Do you want to be filled up with him today? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know I'm going to do it. <laughs> so we need to empty ourselves. I just think about it. I just want to stop for a minute. Anxiety and worry. Man, how, how much does that consume of our time and our thoughts and our hearts? But man, can I just replace that? God, can you just take that from me? I just, I'm going to give it to you. And in turn, that heavenly divine exchange, I'm going to take your spirit. I'm going to take all that you have. I'm going to be filled up. And for some of us, maybe we got to do that every single minute of the day. Sometimes I do because I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Nope. I don't want it. I want you. I want you. So number one, <clears throat> take inventory of your house. Number two, borrow vessels. Number three, shut the door behind you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Kids, shut the door. No, I didn't say slam it. <laughs> shut it. <laughs> Deuteronomy, oh, shut the door behind you. See, I'm, I'm doing pastor now. Thanks, pastor. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't tell him I said that. Deuteronomy 11.1. 1. You shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his rules, and his commandments always. This is why I use this verse because I feel like this. We need to shut the door to disobedience. We need to shut the door to, to just, listen, if we're not, if we're, if we're operating in fear, then we're not obeying God by operating in faith. Yes. We need to we need to realize that. We need to shut the door to sin. At what point are we sinning if we're not believing him for his multiplication in our lives? We need to shut the door to that stuff. But we also need to shut the door. We need to shut the world out. We need to turn off the phones. I love that <laughs> video. It's like dinner's here. We just pray. All right, let's all take out their phones, our phones. That would never happen with a mom, right? <laughs> Although maybe it would, actually, <laughs> right? We're so into our phone, even me. I, I just, and sometimes I get to the point where I, I hate it. And I got to tell you that probably my walk with the Lord, it was, I was, I was on fire for a long time. I still am. But I think that the distraction of the phone has taken away, has taken some of that away. And I realized this, that what would it look like if instead I put my phone down and I just shut myself into my prayer closet, into my room. And I just spent even five minutes of that time. Again, he's the great multiplier. What, what could happen in that time? How will I walk out? I will tell you, I will walk out more filled up with him than with the things of the world. Turn off the TV, right? And be filled up with him. And listen, also, again, Take some time with your family, with your parent, if your mom or dad, to be able to shut yourselves up in the house and just do some devotions together, right? Get into the word of God or pray together over your meal. I love that verse. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I was talking to Mike, I think, and um, some other people that when my kids were little, Sunday school was packed. It was filled up. Families filled the sanctuary. What, where are they? Where are they? What are we, what, why are we not bringing them in? I know it's not all on us. Listen, I know that. There's a busy schedule going on. That's, that, it's distraction, busy. What, what are you pointing at, Zach? <laughs> We're so busy. But let me say, let me just say this. It's, it's a good way to think about it. And then, listen, I know I'm preaching to the choir because you're all here. <laughs> but there's somebody probably watching online that needs to be here with their kids. Because listen, when calamity strikes, 
all the busy schedule is going to go away anyway, isn't it? Well, here you prevent that and you honor God and you're obedient. And man, you're going to be filled up your whole family. Number four, pour into all the vessels. This speaks of our faith. I love this, what this other mother said, Mary. She came and told the man of God and he said, oh, that wasn't it. <laughs> I think I, I'm going to read it to you. How about that? And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her, right? When she was being told that she's going to conceive the son of God. I mean, at that time, a lot of us might be like, mm, I don't know how that's going to go over. But she was like, be it done to me according to your word. That's, that's such great faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 says this, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Jesus says it throughout the word. Daughter, great is your faith. Be it done to you as you desire. <laughs> what do you desire from God? Step out in faith. He healed the blind man. Be it done to you according to your faith. Expect God to do something big. Be someone's Elisha. And listen, if there, if and, and expect to have somebody be your Elisha, and if you can't have that, then be somebody else's Elisha because God is so good about reciprocating. He's so good. This is how that's like a heaven mathematics, right? Yes. <laughs> Where we don't fail. All we got to do is show up to class, right? <laughs> and, and, and 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 pay attention and take it. You know, we don't have to be like quizzed on formulas and all that kind of thing. It's so great. Use what you have. Pour into the lives of your kids. Pour. Uh, Mike was just telling me this is so cool. And I said, I'm going to use it and I will give him credit for it because <laughs> this is his. But at his other church, he remembers foster families coming into the church and going to youth group, foster kids going to youth group. It's not always staying, right? Because they're foster kids. But what they're doing is they're taking the word of God with them and they're sharing it with their families. They're sharing it with other kids and people are get, getting saved. Pour into your kids. Pour into them, Jesus. They know more than you think. I, we hear them down at Sunday school. Oh my gosh, I'm blown away. I don't ever want to not be around a child who is full of the Holy Spirit, full of that faith, because this is how I learn too. I learn from them. Pretty amazing. They love Jesus. So parents, good job bringing them to church. Grandparents, good job. I know some grandparents are the ones that are bringing their kids, to, their grandkids to church. Don't stop. Maybe you're, and listen, this is something else I was thinking of on the way here to this morning. And I know for some, some parents, listen, I know, I know this is heartbreaking. You've raised your kids in the church and they've turned away. Listen, you set that foundation for them. It's up to them now. But expect God to do big things because he wants them even more than you do. And maybe some of you are like, hey, I came to Christ late. And so my kids never got that upbringing. Again, expect big things from God. They will watch you. Even if they live far away, they will know. Have moms going to church? Moms praying again? Oh, uh-uh. Right here and right here. Don't stop praying, moms. God is so good. He's so good. In conclusion, we're going to read this last verse again, 4-7. She came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on the rest. Wow. So a creditor came seeking to make us slaves as well. And that's the enemy of God. But God sent his son to pay our debt, which is our sin, right? He paid our, for our sin, the price of sin, with his own blood, with his own life. And he was, you know, he was happy to do it. Just like a mama is happy to help her kids in any way. He was happy to do it. Jesus stepped in and settled up on our account. He paid our debt. And listen, he not only paid our debt, but he gave us plenty to live off of. And not just us but our sons, our daughters, from generation to generation and generation to generation. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says this, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. Don't forget who you are. You are royalty. You have an inheritance. He will give you 
enough to live off of, not only just pay the debt, that abundant life. Then let me ask you this. If that's the case, we we need to be living, right? Living, living large (laughs) kingdom of God standards, right? What's in your house? More than you know, more than you know. A legacy of faith that you are passing on to your children. And I think about my own girls who are following the Lord. And I'm so thankful for that as a mom. And again, moms don't give up on your kids. But my heart is full. And I want your heart to be full too, no matter what circumstance, no matter what that situation is, because God is good and you can't outgive God. You just got to step out in faith and believe. And so let us close in prayer. And then uh, I'm going to have one closing statement. All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that Jesus, you uh, died for us. And because of that, we are never in lack. We never lack. We're never just moms, by the way. We never lack any good thing. And that you have come and your spirit lives on the inside of this house. We thank you for that. We thank you for your abundance. We thank you for your sacrifice, your dedication, and your great love for us. Help us to step out in faith. Help us to collaborate with you and just watch what you will do in our lives and in the lives of others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As a celebration for Mother's Day, we are handing out flowers and chocolate to all the ladies. Grab some on the way out. All right. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, and to the daddies if they really want it. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.